Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Billy Keels, the host of the Going Long Podcast. Freedom. Every week I'm going to be here interviewing the absolute best in the business as it relates to real asset investing, as well as real Main Street investors. We're going to be having conversations where you can listen in and that's going to help you to continue on your path to education so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident in investing long distance. So make sure that you, uh, that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're liking it as well because that way you can get every single episode as soon as it comes out. And by the way, don't forget to leave today's episode a five-star review. Let's go ahead and listen to today's conversation. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. I'm your host, Billy Keels. And you know what? If you've ever wanted to know how to level up your passive investing game while working a full-time job, then guess what? Today's a conversation that you're going to want to listen to until the very last word. I'm telling you the very last word, I promise, because today's guest is not only a CPA, certified public accountant, she is also the controller at a real estate private equity firm. She's an investor. She's a syndicator. And she is the host of the Level Up podcast. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's show, Lisa Hilton. Lisa, welcome uh, to the show. Thank you so much, Billy. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I'm like all super excited. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to be on your show. I've always seen like all the snippets on Instagram and I'm like, wow, that, look, that looks amazing. Really, he's doing his thing. I love it. There you go. There you go. And guess what? Soon we're going to be a snippet together on Instagram as well, pretty soon. So uh, looking forward <laughs> to that. Listen, Lisa, you know that we love to ask everybody here. We kind of asked some of the questions in the beginning and some of the questions in the end. And um, right. actually, one of the questions was inspired by you. So um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But the first question is, where do you live in the United States? Yes, I live in Inglewood, which is a city in Los Angeles, California. All right, perfect. Over that, out there on the left coast of the United States. So that is very awesome. Appreciate that. And I think most of us know where California is. And um, yes, here is one of the things that I always really like to ask is, what is the most positive thing that's happened to you in the last 24 hours? <laughs> Like uh, <laughs> I would say that the most positive thing that has happened to me in the last 24 hours, gosh, it's so hard to just have one. There's been, I would say the two most is waking up this morning um, healthy um, and being able to get a workout in before this podcast is, is one of them. Um, and then the second one is just having a community Yesterday, I had two good calls, one with some friends um, and another in a small community of mine. And I would say that those interactions were also some of the most positive things that have happened to me in the last 24 hours. So, yeah. Awesome. So the simplicity of just being healthy, I think, is one of the most beautiful things, especially yeah. when you recognize that it is something that is positive because, yes, you are definitely uh, very fortunate when you wake up every morning and you are um, healthy and you have a nice community that is around you to be able to support yeah. and share and challenge you. So that's uh, those are two awesome things. And so we want to get into your backstory like super quick, Lisa. And like yes. I didn't even talk about like the origin story because like that's super cool as well um, where you started out. And uh, but I, I know a lot of the, the going on family really wants to understand more about your backstory. Kind of what are some of the major decisions that you've taken to get to this point in your investing journey? And then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, totally. Um, so I'm originally from the Cayman Islands. Um, you know, my parents are Jamaican. I grew up uh, with parents who were who were hardworking and they sort of believed in um, working and making sure like getting a good education. Um, my father was a contractor. Um, so I was exposed to real estate because he built 14 apartment units along with side my mother. Um, so that was my exposure to real estate. However, being in around that um, and growing up around that kind of environment, by the time I got into my adult, like teenage to adult years, after like cleaning and like being there for apartments and all that, it sort of put me off from real estate. Um, and I went directly into professional 
life, accounting and et cetera, which I don't regret. Um, and so when I think about like the big decisions I made, um, one was the decision to leave Cayman to go to Boston to work for four years. Um, and the intention of doing that was to, you know, push my career to new levels. Um, right before I did that, I actually bought my first place in Cayman. So that was another key decision as well. Um, I bought a two bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse in Grand Cayman. Um, but I bought it because I loved it. I didn't really buy it because the numbers made sense. I just saw it. I loved it. And I bought it. And everyone around me was like, oh, yeah, you should buy, you should buy. And I was like, OK, yeah, you know, I'll do this. And then a year later, I made the decision to go to Boston, was there for four years. That property cash flow the first year, but lost money for a total of five to six years. So by time, another significant decision I also made is after four years of living in Boston, building my career in Boston, um, I decided that I wanted the firm asked me, I was working in public accounting and they were like, you know, what is your plan? And I was like, oh, I don't have any real plan. And they were like, uh, -uh you need a plan. And I said, okay. And they, they said to me, you know, think about where it is that you want to go with your career. And I said, okay. And I started thinking about it and it took me some time, but I got clear. I was like, okay, if I'm going to leave Boston, I want to leave for a city that had better weather. Um, more active lifestyle, a city that had opportunities in my industry, which was financial services, which still is. Um, and then wherever I ended up, I was going to commit to being there for at least five to 10 years. Um, and that's when I started looking. I fell in love with San Francisco. But I say that life gave me Los Angeles because this is where the opportunity was to uh, the firm had roles here that enabled me to continue to grow in my career. And that's how I ended up moving to L.A. I said, you know what? I'll take LA since it is California and I'll move and I'll make it work. Um, and six months in, I loved it. Um, and then I would say about a year after I got here is when I sold my part, the, the townhouse that I bought that was not cash flowing. <laughs> um, I got an email in the mail in the inbox saying I had a check, a bill for $1,000. The AC had broke. The tenant called the AC company that I had used to come out in service. Um, I said, okay, this is, this is the final straw. This has to go. I've held it long enough. Um, and I sold it got out and I was like, there's no way I'm doing real estate ever again. And I say that the universe has a funny sense of humor because I want to say maybe about two years after that, I ended up taking this job working for a private equity real estate role as a controller working on funds that invest in all types of real estate from multifamily, industrial, hotels, the whole nine yards. And six months in, I said, wow, People can make money investing in real estate. You just need to know what the heck you're doing. <laughs> um, and that's how I began my journey. Like I was thinking about house hacking in LA. And then I was like, I saw like a duplex goes for a million dollars to turnkey to then eventually meeting Monique Calm at a landmark uh, program about two years ago. Um, and yeah, you know, we never talked about real estate or anything, but like, six months into this program or three months in, um, the program was ending at that point. And, uh, you know, someone in our little group said, Hey, let's exchange business cards. And I saw her business card and she was a real estate investor. And I said, Oh, wow, I had no idea. Um, but it took me another three months to call her, to ask her, tell me about how your business works. And that's, you know, that has opened up a world that I never knew it even existed. So yeah, a lot of those decisions along the way, you know, just being open to new experiences and trusting the flow of life. So, yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, and be, being able to trust the flow of life, I think that's one of those things that is just, it's amazing, right? Because you started in, in Grand Cayman, you thought about the professional life, then you decided that, uh, you know, you, there was something that you wanted to make a purchase on and it was a two bedroom, two and a half bath. Right. And one of the things I always like to say to people is you don't always have to buy everything for a financial return. And at that point in your life, it was the return that it was giving you because you really liked it. And mm -hmm. you had to make another decision and you said, all right, well, I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go to Boston, right? I'm going to leave the yeah. wonderful place and go to Boston where, you know, Boston's a great place. <laughs> <laughs> you hung out there for, for three, four, year, four years, um, and then you decided that you, you wanted to see something else. There was another opportunity that your firm gave you, or right. you had the opportunity, and you knew that you wanted an in-state 
like five to 10 years. And those bills, when you get those are no fun. Like I just got yeah. um, two different $6,000 um, HVAC issues a couple of weeks ago. They, mm. came, they came across my desk and I was like, all right, here we go. And so, yeah, so there's certain points where you think, well, you know what, this is, this is the end of it. And then as good fortune would have it, you started working at a private equity firm that really is focused on real estate, <laughs> which yes. is kind of funny, right? And yeah. so it's like you said, like depending on where you're looking at or how you're saying things, you can see opportunities. And then that kind of, started the light bulb going off in your mind and then they start about building relationships and you met people like Monique and she's, uh, she's phenomenal as well. And I'm sure you continue to learn uh, loads uh, with and from her. Um, mm-hmm. And so, you know, there, there's this thing though, because a lot of people would have decided I'm not going to get back into real estate because I don't mm-hmm. want another thousand dollar bill and I'm working in a really good job. It pays mm-hmm. me really well. So even though you were seeing it on the inside, like, a lot of people just think about it and think about it and think about it and think about it. And so Mm -hmm. what was it that made you say, I know I was burned over here, quote unquote, but I think I want to get back into it. Oh yeah, totally. Such a good question. Um, Oh, that speaks so directly to like, when I think about when I was like the process between when I started that job and then I saw, Oh, what real estate could do. And right up to the point at which I met Monique, I had been looking for turnkeys for like maybe two years. And I would fly to Alabama and Detroit because I live in LA. So I'd be flying to these other cities because my city is not good for cash flow. Um, It's challenging. Some people make it work, but it wasn't really working for me. Um, And, you know, I was going to these cities and I kept remembering my experience. So I was like, okay, I need to make sure these numbers work. Um, And I just couldn't pull the trigger. But when I got exposed to syndications, Um, and the ability to invest passively in these large um, investment opportunities, that for me was a game changer. Okay. So before you, before you say any more, right. So I just want to make sure that everyone understands the context. I want to make sure that I understand the context as well, because you you just said you were living in California. Yes. You were learning about turnkey realty, right. And you were flying across the country to Alabama and other places, right. So when you were flying across the country, you were investing your time for to look at a particular property or were you looking to purchase portfolios of properties and using the example of Alabama? Yeah, great question. So I was not looking to buy portfolios of properties. I was more looking to maybe create portfolios of property over time. Yes. Um, But I was looking to buy like single family homes. Okay. I love this. And so this is really key, Lisa, what you're sharing with everyone, right? Because you, and and this was a path that I took, like I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I was like, I'm going to buy a property because I was going to get 200 bucks a month and whatever. And and and, and so you took action, which I love, right? Mm -hmm. You took action, you were going and you were looking at a property. And then, and this is where I want everybody in the going along family to really listen to what she said was, then she started understanding about passive investing and Mm -hmm. syndication. So what happened between that point where you're going, I want to buy this one house with my money to, okay, there's this thing called syndication and there is a different path. Cause I think that's a, like, that's a really important moment for a lot of people. So talk us through what happened that made you go, oh, maybe not this single family thing through key, key, turnkey anymore. Like for me, I think, you know, being one was exposure. Like I wasn't really exposed to syndications. So I didn't know that it was possible. I, you know, as a matter of fact, I distinctively remembered maybe a year before I met Monique and found out about this stuff. I was at a lunch with, you know, that some auditors had thrown for our team. And I said, does anyone know anyone that invests in self-storage? Like these self-storage units, like surely there are people who invest in that, right? Like, how do you find out? Does anyone know? And no one at the table knew. And I was like, huh. And so like, I just didn't know, like, I didn't know it was possible. And so because I didn't know it was possible, I just felt like all I had was just buying single family and then perhaps buying some turnkey. And then, I mean, sorry, buying maybe some multi, small multis, like duplexes, fourplexes, that kind of stuff. Um, And then 
when I met her and I finally then gave her a call like three months later, I was, I took a staycation and I was cleaning out my handbag and I ran across her card. I said, oh, I still haven't called this lady. So I called her and um, yeah, she told me about what she did. And I was like, hold on. Like, I didn't know that people could do this. Like, I only thought it was like these big institutions, like the places that I work at, like I thought they were the only people who could do this kind of stuff. And she was like, no. And then through her, I've just met tons and tons of people. And then you just break into this whole, you know, world that is just, yeah. So now I've gone from that time to have now invested in four with one deal getting ready to go full cycle. So that property is actually being sold. The one that she actually introduced to me in 2019 is now under contract to be sold. Um, So yeah, um, it's, and it's worked. I, I can't, it's been a really good experience for me. Perfect. So I love that. So uh, just the fact that you don't know what you don't know, like I didn't grow up in a family that knew anything about real estate. I mean, it was not the only thing we knew was you could save money. Like that was a really good thing, right? Not even (laughs) thinking about investing. And so um, then having the exposure is the word you use. I love that is being exposed to this and really learning about it and finding out more and really diving in. And once again, there's another pattern, which is you taking action. You said you've done this four times, which I think is great. And one that is getting ready to go full cycle. And for those that are still learning with us, meaning that you're getting getting ready to execute or exit on the, on the business. So made the purchase, did the value add or whatever you need to do. And now you have the opportunity to uh, dispose of or or sell the asset, which I think is, is great. And you're going to be able to compare that to, what was said in the business plan and see how, um, yeah. how much you are in line with it or, or, or above it. So, um, which I think is cool. So, so when you, so, so you're working in a very demanding right, environment yeah. at the same time, you're finding time to invest passively, but yeah. it's curious because you're working in like the financial services sector, which most people, right. I know you're in the real estate part, but most people in mm-hmm. financial services are like, Oh, cool. Paper assets. Like that's where I'm going to go and invest my mm-hmm. time and my money. Like, yeah. I guess, no, cause I, we didn't really, I didn't really ask the question, but are you investing as well in paper assets? And if not, mm-hmm. what is it that also attracted you to like doing more of the real estate versus just paper? Sure. Yeah. So for paper, for, you know, the stock market and that kind of stuff, primarily 401k, like my 401k investments are primarily in the stock market. Um, But the bulk of my, like, I just love real estate. Like I love, you know, the hard assets. I love being able to get cash flow, like that comes from these properties. I love syndications because working a demanding job and wanting to invest in real estate already knowing what it's like to have be a landlord on a property where you're thousands of miles away from it um and there's issues and being able to like navigate all that stuff like while working a full-time job i know it's not easy i've already been there i know what it's like it's not my cup of tea it's not where i want to be um so when I got presented syndications. I really like it because one, you know, I am able to invest in a property that has multiple doors. I love multifamily. Um, I also then I'm able to diversify. So like I'll get into other types of asset classes that are doing very well in this current market environment that I wouldn't have been able to do on my own, like industrial self-storage, mobile home parks. I just would not have been able to do that on my own. And these kinds of opportunities enable me to get exposure into those different asset classes. And I think The other thing is the tax benefits. I already earn a lot. I already pay a lot in taxes. And what I find is a blessing with investing in syndications that do the cost segregation study is that they enable me to then have generate these passive losses. So the cash flow that I do receive in my bank account, and I can choose to do whatever, save it for the next deal or use it because of something. Or if I'm considering, you know, quitting my job to, you know, focus on my business, like I have cash flow streams that are through these passive investments that are going to continue to pay me 
while I continue to, you know, build out my job or continue to grow in my career. And to me, I think that is, that's the key. I, I feel like a lot of people don't really realize that there's this other way that is possible. And for a lot of people, like when they think about real estate, it's like, oh, like I'm going to have to be a landlord. I'm going to have to deal with tenants. I'm going to have to deal with the landlord laws. And as someone who lives in California, which is a heavy land uh, tenant friendly state, you know, people who live here who are thinking about real estate, they're probably the first thing that they're thinking about is I don't want to deal with the laws that, you know, these hard laws, you know, dealing with that penalize landlords for providing the service of housing to people. So it makes you go into the stock market. But I feel like this opportunity, the opportunity that invest passively enables you to get into some of these other markets, leveraging the experience and expertise of, you know, good operators who can, who are able to, who have the experience managing these properties and projects um, to be able to get that return. So I think that's really important. Yeah. And so the big, Figuring that these types of things are really important. And one of the things that you said, and, and I just maybe I want to challenge a little bit of one of the things that you, yes. said, that you said, you you wouldn't have been able to get into so many different asset types. So self-storage, industrial. And yes. I think what, what you mean is, I know you, you're extremely capable. You would have, you probably just wouldn't have done it as quickly. And what that also gives me insight into the way that you're thinking, Lisa, is that you recognize that time is an asset that is absolutely valuable, valuable yes. right? And, and speed, being able to get the experience of those different assets, I think is phenomenal. And that's going to resonate with so many of the different uh, people that are listening to us today as part of the Going Long family, because it, it is the, the speed thing and being able to work with groups and work with teams, yeah. to be able to access types of opportunities that you would normally not, especially if you're waiting on something that was going to happen on a ticker on, on NASDAQ or, right. or Wall Street. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Agreed, agreed, agreed. So one of the things that you also do, right? You live in California. Yes. We're here on the Going Long podcast, right? We really want to help people feel much more comfortable and confident investing beyond your backyard. And I just need right. you to confirm something for me. The assets that you are currently investing in, are they all in California? No, none of them are in California. Okay, great. That's music to my ears, <laughs> music to our ears. So I always ask the question, like the books say, even the, the, the book that I read that got me into real estate is like right. the whole concept was like invest in your backyard. <laughs> sure. I've never done that. And you're not doing that. So right. why in the world um, would you take on that extra quote unquote risk to invest beyond your backyard? Sure. Um, for me, I invest beyond my backyard because, you know, I am able to get returns that I feel that I'm, I'm able to re achieve currently in my backyard. Um, I will say this to the extent that, you know, I, I think it really comes down to like as an investor, what it is that you need and what you're looking for. So I'm at a place in my life where I am interested in investing one for cash flow and two for appreciation. So I want a healthy mix of both. Um, and I don't necessarily need tax losses per se. I, I want assets that come on that aren't increasing my taxable income but not necessarily tax losses because I have, I'm active. I'm, I'm, I'm not an active real estate investor. I'm an active W-2 employee. So the passive losses, I can't necessarily offset them against my W-2 salary. Um, I can only offset them against other passive income. So if I was in a position, you know, which I envision later on in my life, you know, I'll have lots of passive income. Then that's how I could see like a market like LA becoming extremely attractive because I could buy assets here that are generating losses from day one that will generate gains in the next five to 10, maybe even 15 or 20 years. And by then, you know, I have a different situation. And so it's just, it all really comes down to you and like, where are you at and what, you know, what's important to you. So, yeah. Yeah. No, so, and that's really cool. Cause you, and you mentioned this over and over, and I hope that everyone, as you're listening and watching what Lisa's talking about, she's mentioned over and over, like what it is that she's looking, what benefit she's looking for real estate right. provider, right? And she's mentioned it over and over, cash flow. She got went from California to Alabama, 
and because that's a typically a state right. where you're going to find more cash flow. And now you're involved in different locations, right. uh, assets that are providing you cash flow. You're going to get some appreciation as well. And then exactly. you've also broken down the whole point, the whole point around your taxes. And the well, I think we could go into a whole different thing. Yeah, about that's that. like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to like go there, but it, like the whole active and passive income thing, it, it's a very important part of the strategy and, mm-hmm. and really being able to understand that and how you can um, have those tax laws work to your advantage and do that in a way that is absolutely legal, I think is, is something that is, is great. So one of the things that I do want us to kind of pivot a little bit towards, sure. because, like you're a super busy professional, like you're really, really busy and it's a demanding job and you are passively investing. And then like right. you decided, hey, look, I like this so much that I actually want to be a syndicator myself. <laughs> so tell us about that kind of movement. So going from not just being passively, but actually You're beginning right. to bring other people sure. to syndications or aggregating capital and different and the same type of interest for a common goal. So talk to us about why you decided to make that uh, jump. As yeah, well. yeah, totally. Oh my goodness. So um, where do I begin? I, uh, for me, I think I'm an undercover uh, extrovert, like because most accountants aren't really like out there. They're not, (laughs) they're typically like, you know, a little bit more um, subdued kind of thing. Like, um, so I have always been someone who really enjoy like talking to people and getting to know people. I loved building teams. I loved being on teams all through. And hence, I think that's why I stayed in public accounting for so long because of all the team environments and just being on all these large teams. So when I was introduced to syndications, I've also been very entrepreneurial. So I've always been very business minded. I love the idea of being able to create businesses that provide services to other people and that be able to change people's lives. So when I saw this, um, I started investing and then I saw it as a biz, like I got to know about the business itself. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like, I feel like there's a need for this. And as I continued to invest in more deals and I shared it with people around me, I realized that people, as I said before, at that conversation I had when I was asking, hey, does anyone invest in like, Anyone know about investing in self-storage? I already knew people just don't know. And if they knew, they probably would be interested. Uh, So yeah, so for me, that's how I ended up starting my podcast. Um, I started it in February of 2020. Um, And when I started, it was the whole series, which I actually had Billy come on as well. I, I had a whole series on just introducing people on how they can invest in real estate outside of just buying their own single family house to live in, as well as buying like turnkey, because I think most people know to buy turnkey and maybe a small apartment. Um, like a fourplex or something. Uh, So I wanted to introduce that, hey, there's so many other different ways and here are all the different ways that you can invest in real estate. Uh, So yeah, like I I love it. Um, Yeah, what can I say? I love doing this work. I love being able to provide and create opportunities for other people to continue to build wealth um, and to be able to be creative and like do things that they want to do. So- help people to do what they want to do, be able to be creative. And the fact that you, I guess I'm just going to go back because it's like a pattern again, right? So so (laughs) recognizing that there were certain parts of what you wanted to be able to accomplish, right? Which was help people shed light on these types of opportunities that most people weren't talking about when you asked about self-storage and things like that. And it was kind of like crickets. No one was answering. So you went out, you found the, you found your way. And then like, very good, successful, significant people, you also are now interested in making sure that you're bringing others along with you. And yes. so when you talk about the Level Up podcast, and this is one of the things that, you know, and I, I love being a guest on on your podcast as well. It's phenomenal. And you're doing great things over there. And so everybody, by the way, on the Going Long family, you need to go check out the Level Up podcast with Lisa. Um, it is, it's really is, it's a beacon, right? To be able to call other people and help to shed some light yeah. on what they can be able to do from this a quote unquote alternative space, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and it and it really you're helping a lot of people to understand uh, about how the syndication game works and how yeah. they can partake and and get the maximum benefit. So, um, 
I'm interested in kind of, so, so that's, that's really helpful. So tell us a little bit, like, like before we get into the going along final three, mm-hmm. what's hap- What's next? Like what's next for Lisa and what, what's going on? Oh, uh, what's next? Um, wow. That's, uh, um, what's next for Lisa is, you know, for me, I, I think it's twofold. One, I am very focused on continuing to build out my brand. Um, so that's the level up REI podcast, my podcast, and then also my investment arm of my business, um, getting super duper focused on, you know, my target audience of who I'm trying to serve and really speaking specifically to them and being able to provide, um, to that person. Uh, for me, you know, I focus a lot on people who play in the, who work in the financial services space, because that's the space I come from. And that's the space that I know. Uh, so being able to provide, uh, you know, content that specifically helps them to understand, you know, in their terms, you know, how these kinds of opportunities can help them to continue to build wealth and to, to achieve whatever they want to achieve in their life. Uh, so that's what I would say is, it's, you know, is coming up for me. And in terms of my podcast, like what one thing that I'm super proud of is I have recently launched conversations with passive investors, and I absolutely love those episodes so much because I love bringing you know people who come onto my show who passively invest to share their stories because I think that a lot of people just don't know other people who invest and like sharing the stories of the things that have gone bad, as well as the things that have gone great. Um, the lessons they've learned, uh, I think is just so instrumental and so helpful for other people as they think about making investments of their own. So, uh, I continue to think of new ideas of, you know, trying to continue to add value to people's lives. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing. That's what's most important to me. All right. So, yeah. so continue to add value to other people's lives, continue to work on your brand, continue to work and 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 get the most out of um, the Level Up REI podcast, which you're doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job in, in helping so many people to become educated and really in, enjoying yes. the, uh, the passive investor highlight uh, that, that you're focusing on now as well. And so, you know, here's the thing. Like, Lisa, I just want to keep talking to you forever. But like the thing is, <laughs> yes. kind of can't. <laughs> right. Um, so we kind of going to go through a lightning round of sure. what is known as the going long final three. But the thing is, I never ask anybody about the going long final three unless you tell me that you're ready. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's right. do awesome. it. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Awesome. Here we go. So listen, we started on that side of the pond. We're going to come back this way. And I would love for you to share with the going long family. What is your favorite European city that you've either visited or still on your bucket list to visit? Ah, Ooh, there's so many. Um, oh, I will. <laughs> I'll go with Florence, Italy. Oh, nice. Yes, okay. I love it. <laughs> Florence is so wonderful. I'll I'll add to that that I went there a few years ago uh, for a I, I dance Argentine tango, so uh, a retreat for women who lead and follow. So it was awesome. <laughs> I awesome. loved it. Awesome. One of my best friends that we met in Paris. We used to do salsa, Cuban salsa dance ah. in Paris all the time. He switched. He went from salsa to tango. And so he's a big uh, tango dancer now. So I, <laughs> Norway. Love it. We'll, we'll talk about that one later. Um, so listen, <laughs> so the next thing is very successful people always only make one mistake, like do the whole, get it wrong every time. So here's the thing. Really successful people mm-hmm. make lots of mistakes, have mm-hmm. lots of learning opportunities. But the thing is, is, what happens is always taking away the lesson. And so would love for you to share with the going along family, like what is one lesson that you would share with us that will help us as we're along in our journey? Wow. Um, one, uh, there's just so many, but I think that the one lesson I would say is really trust in your intuition, your inner knowing. After you get all of what you need to get from other people, I think it's super important to truly sit with yourself and give yourself the time to ask what is right for you. Because I have found that the times that I have not checked in on what is right for me, I end up going down a road that wasn't for me. 
So, yeah. Love that. Trust your intuition and, and be able to move forward on your. Yes. Intuition. Yeah. So uh, I, I love that. Awesome. And so this is the last of the going on final three. Yes. Going to feed our mind. <laughs> it's really yeah. about feeding the mind so that uh, we can kind of take it home. But uh, help us understand what is the one book that you would recommend to the going on family today? Okay. Uh, I would like to give you one book, but I can't give you one. I have to give you two. So there's two. The first is Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. I absolutely love this book. It's by Carol Dweck. Um, it gets into growth versus fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, a lot of people are stuck in, they're stuck where they are because they don't believe that they could actually grow and change. And they feel that life is just a certain way and that's the only way it's gonna ever happen. Um, so I love that book for that. And the second book is um, is called The Go-Giver. Oh. Um, I love The Go-Giver so much. Um, I can't remember who it's by right Bob now. Bird. Bob Bird. Yes, so awesome book. Those are the two books I'd recommend. Right. If you don't read anything this year, Right. Read those two, <laughs> especially mindset. I'm gonna start there. Yes, right. the Go Giver is, a, is an excellent, an excellent book. So, wow, um, so many things, so many things. So I, you know, and and we'll kind of, yeah, all the way from Cayman getting started, making yeah. decisions, buying that first place based on you wanted to buy it, not a financial purchase. Moving to Boston and having to move out, then, then getting the opportunity. Moving to LA. To the, left, to the left coast from there, figuring you wanted to get and do something different. You just took action, going to buy that rental property, realized that there's this whole new world called um, syndication, doing it passively, four places, different states, yeah. and now leading syndications. And so you have talked about so many different things, what you're doing at the Level Up REI podcast. And I know that there's so many people, Lisa, that are like, oh my gosh, I got to get in touch with Lisa. I've got to talk to her. I want to find out what she's <laughs> doing. I want to be a part of the stuff that she's a part of. So help us understand what is the best way for the Going Along family to uh, contact you? Yes. The best way is to go to my website, which is www.lisahilton.com. Um, you can find all the information, everything from my podcast to my blogs, to my seven day series on passive investing made easy uh, to get started, to learn how that whole entire process works. Um, and then you can just reach out to me, Lisa at lisahilton.com. And that's Hilton is like the Hilton Hotel, only thing with a Y. All right. So wow. there you go. Awesome. LisaHilton.com. So go there. Lisa, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for investing your time with me and the entire Going Along family. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Just a couple quick words for the Going Along family. Uh, once again, Lisa, I mean, she, she delivered like huge. So, it, you know, you have an opportunity today, Going Along family, to share today's episode with two to three other people at least, right? Have that be that po person that's the positive impact on your friends, your family. And also it gives them the opportunity to, to move closer towards our tribe, right? So that uh, they can also, we can build our tribe with other like-minded people. And you know what? One of the things Lisa and I would really love today is also share your review with us. Give us an honest review. This is one of the things that I literally go through every single review because I want to understand what is it that you like? What would you like to see more of? What would you like me to stop doing? Mm -hmm. um, so take a moment just to leave your honest review right? And, uh, and, and do that. And I guess what I would say is I'm really looking forward to welcome you back on the very next conversation. And until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very much. Wow, don't you love hearing from top-notch experts in the field? You know, when I was getting started, I really wish that I would have had access to such experts. And even more, I wish they would have given me like a really simple list of things to follow so that I could have gotten to my goals much faster and been much happier even sooner. So that's why I've created for you the seven things that you should avoid in order to be successful in long distance investing. And you can pick that up really easily by going to billykeels.com forward slash seven things to avoid. And also, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to leave a five-star review. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our very next episode. So go out and make it a great day.